Hey guys, so today I'm not going to be talking about music or flute. I'm going to be talking about insurance in the US healthcare system. And um, there might be a little bit of a change of pace for a lot of you, and it might be a little surprising that I'm talking about this. But for those of you who don't know, my day job is as a pharmacy technician for a major pharmacy chain in the US. So this is kind of my day to day. And I see a lot of young people particularly come in and really not know what they're doing or what information they need or really anything about their insurance. And so I'm hoping that getting this information out there in a relatively basic way will help you guys have better interactions at pharmacies and also just like pick better insurance when you're looking at your employer's healthcare or through the open marketplace or however you get your insurance. So first, make sure you know what plans you actually have and particularly what your medical plan is and what your pharmacy plan is. They are different. No matter what medical insurance you have, you will have a separate plan that has your pharmacy benefits. It could be owned by the same company and then that's easy, but it isn't necessarily. Uh, if you look at your medical card, there will, if it has the RxBIN, PCN, and Rx group, if that exists, on the card, then you're fine. That's the only card you need to carry. And when you show it to the pharmacist or pharmacy technician, they'll know exactly what to do with it. If that medical card does not have those numbers on it, you have another card, and that means that you have a separate pharmacy benefits manager, or just the way that your contract works, they sent you a separate card. Uh, it may be from a company called, like CVS Caremark or Express Scripts. Those are the two that I see the most separate cards from, but it could be really anything. Uh, so make sure that you know which pharmacy plan you have. And if you don't have the card, especially particularly if like you're on your parents' plan or something like that, make sure they send you a copy of it because it will save a world of trouble if you get it. And also... If you happen to get sick and you need like antibiotics really quickly, you're not paying out of pocket and then trying to get reimbursed and having all this whole mess of things. It's not worth it, I promise. <laughs> um, so once you have that information, you don't really need to know what these codes mean or anything like that, but you do need to know some of the basics of the plan itself. Um, after your medical plan, is it an HMO or is it a PPO? And do you need referrals to go see specialists? Um, HMOs are typically like closed plans where you have to get referrals to see doctors outside of your initial system. You usually have to pick a primary care f physician and you generally cannot see people outside of the practice that they are in without a referral. PPOs are a little bit more flexible. You can self-refer. You don't really have to like designate a um, primary care physician and you have a little bit more flexibility with that. Then you also have the fun with deductibles. What is a deductible? It is basically a pool of money that you have to pay out before your max benefits kick in. Um, it's one of the most annoying things in US healthcare and it can cost you a lot of money. So be aware of your deductible. Uh, one of the things that I always recommend when people are looking at insurance plans is like, how high is that deductible and is it something that you could pay out in one go like say you had surgery could you pay the money that it is asking to, for you to pay up front so yeah the thing the amount that they take out of your paycheck month to week to week may be pretty low but if it's a fifteen thousand dollar deductible and you have to have surgery can you pay fifteen thousand dollars immediately if you can't then maybe pay a little bit more on your monthly premiums, that's what the monthly payments are called, and go with a lower deductible plan. If you don't intend to be sick or you really don't have any medical history or any issues like that and you're willing to take the risk, then fine, but keep in mind that it is a risk. Um, I was not expecting to be sick two years ago and was very lucky that I had not picked a super high deductible plan, but I did pay a lot more than I should have just because I had a higher deductible than I do now. Uh, then you have your out-of-pocket costs. So after your deductible is paid off, there's a certain amount of money that you pay with your regular insurance rate. Usually it's like an 80 that they pay, 80 percent that they pay and 20 percent that you pay. It really does depend on the plan and that's something that you can look into when you're looking at the plans. Um, but usually it's 80-20, that's pretty normal. Uh, at some point, 
When you've paid enough money, they will start paying for everything, which is an awesome thing that Obamacare created because you used to only have a certain amount of benefit and then it was done and the insurance company would not pay for anything else. And that is awful. So appreciate that. Uh, so basically, for like using me as an example, my deductible this year is $1,500. So that money, I just have to pay up front. Basically, every time I go to the doctor, I pay their contract price up until $1,500. After $1,500, I pay 20% of the contract price. So if the contract price is $100, I pay 20 on the service, up until $4,500. So after I've paid $4,500 of the year, my deductible included, I no longer have to pay anything. <laughs> um, so keep in mind your out-of-pocket costs as well as your deductible. If you have to have a major surgery and you know about it, you might want to look to see whether the higher premiums is worth the lower out of pocket um, because chances are like $160,000 uh, surgery will get you to that out of pocket pretty quickly. Um, and then like are the higher premiums worth you not paying $4,000 that year? Keep, those are the, the, like, the risks and benefits that you have to weigh. Um, if you are worried about being sick, then maybe kind of go in the middle, like try to figure out what risks you're willing to take with the money that you will have to pay. And yes, it is absolutely awful that you have to risk your health and you have to risk your financial health to be able to do this. But with informed choices, you at least won't go bankrupt, hopefully. Um, that being said, before you have any procedure done, because keep in mind that medical billing is happen it happens after the fact. You will not know what your co-pays or what your amount will be until after the procedure has happened. So make sure that your insurance covers the location that you are having the procedure at. So the hospital or the medical service and the doctor. And while you can't necessarily control this, hope that the anesthesiologist is also covered. Because uh, sometimes anesthesiologists are not covered the same way that your doctor is. Granted, anesthesi like, anesthesia is a little bit cheaper than like the actual procedure will be, but these are all things that are like factors in the surgery system and it's really, really miserable. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is what a prior authorization is and why everyone in the, in the entire system except the insurance company hates them. So. Uh, it's pretty common with like surgical procedures that they have to get prior approval to bill it to the insurance. That makes sense. Like they want to make sure that this is necessary. They want to make sure that there is a medical need for it. So your doctor has to submit paperwork to get the surgery approved. It's very, very common. I'm sure a lot of you have had that happen if you've had the misfortune of having surgery. It happens. What you might not have encountered is a pharmacy uh, prior authorization super fun. So where the medical providers can figure out whether they need a prior authorization for a procedure very quickly, they don't always check for prior authorizations for medications. So you come to the pharmacy and someone like me goes, I'm really sorry, this isn't covered by your insurance yet. And that yet is the important thing. Once that, once we see that notice, we send a notice back to the doctor of like, hey, this medication isn't isn't uh, covered by the insurance yet. You need to send more paperwork to the doctor or to the <laughs> to the insurance company to prove that this is medically necessary. Is this ridiculous? Absolutely. Is this so much work for the doctor's office? Absolutely. Is it going to be a pain for you? Yes. Yes, it is. We hate it too. Um, the best thing you can do with that is make sure that you follow up with your doctor as well. Uh, they get a million requests from pharmacies a day, and a lot of the times they'll have be a little bit more attentive to patient requests. Um, but also make sure that the pharmacy is sending the request to the doctor and the doctor has received it. Because sometimes things get lost in translation, fax numbers are wrong, uh, electronic things fail, like there are things that go wrong. Uh, the best thing that you can do is just make sure that you're checking in with both parties uh, to make sure that the doctor got everything and that the pharmacy sent everything. And once the doctor's received all of that, don't bug the pharmacy anymore. We can't do anything. It's between the doctor and the insurance. We're just the middlemen that start the process. 
Uh, if you get lucky, sometimes there's a manufacturer's assistance program that, that can help you get start on the medication before your doctor gets it approved. Um, that's something to ask about at the pharmacy, uh, especially if it's a brand name drug or something that's very, very new to the market. A lot of medications have these programs. Um, the easiest way to find those is to Google the drug name and copay card and see what comes up. And then do read the fine print because it does tell you a lot. And again, if you have a good pharmacy technician or a good pharmacist, they will help you with that. Um, basically what I do for a living is uh, work with uh, very, very expensive migraine and uh, diabetes drugs and try to get them to the patients quicker. So um, don't be mad at the pharmacy, please. If they've done their job and they've sent everything to the doctor, there was nothing they can do apart from that. And do not put pressure on them just because your doctor wrote the prescription. It's one of the most annoying things that we have to deal with. And it's one of the most annoying things for the doctors. And it is not our fault in that, like we just work in the system that exists and the system needs to be changed rather than you yelling at us. Um, please, please, please don't yell at your pharmacy techs. Please, please, <laughs> um, I'm not biased at all. Yeah, I, I hope this information dump is somewhat helpful. Um, I'm happy to answer specific questions or go more into depth into the things if you're interested. Um, and yeah, I hope this is helpful and helps you figure out a little bit more about insurance. And um, yeah, one more thing, don't yell at your pharmacy technicians. If you like this video, give it a like. If you're new here, subscribe, and I will see you very soon.